JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's daily market review for June the 17th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, head of research here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or, or investment recommendation, should not, be, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded uh, lower against all but one of the other major currencies on Thursday during the Asian session Friday, with the Swiss franc and the British pound being the main gainers, and the Aussie and the yen being the currencies that lost the least. Uh, excuse me, that gained the least. The only currency against which the Greenback managed to record some gains was, um, was the Canadian dollar. Now, this past week, uh, uh, this week, the war we are ending today, was a central bank week with the Fed, the ECB holding meetings on Wednesday. Uh, ECB's gathering was an ad hoc one, but still was a gathering. The SNB and the Bank of England deciding on policy yesterday, and the Bank of Japan announcing its own decision today. The Fed lifted rates by 75 basis points, while the ECB discussed fra fragmentation risks but we talked and analyzed those outcomes in more detail uh, in yesterday's daily report. So today we will discuss the S&P, the Bank of England, and the Bank of Japan decisions. Now getting the ball rolling with the S&P, this bank surprised the financial world with its decision to lift interest rates by 50 basis points from minus 0.75% to minus 0.25%. The consensus was for officials to keep interest rates untouched. This was the SNB's uh, first rate hike in 15 years, with policymakers noting that they are ready to continue pushing that hike uh, button. They also dropped the reference uh, saying that the Swiss franc is highly valued. So, therefore, uh, the unexpectedly hoggish outcome lifted the Swiss franc against all the other major currencies. Now, uh, now that the SNB has joined the hawkish uh, chorus among uh, major central banks, depending on how fast they are planning to move ahead, the Swiss franc could outperform some of its major peers. For now, we see a better gauge to exploit uh, further franc gains, the, the franc-yen pair. This is because overnight the Bank of Japan maintained its ultra-loose uh, policy, staying as the only dovish major central bank. We will discuss uh, the Bank of Japan outcome in a while, but for now let's fly from Switzerland to the UK, where the Bank of England hiked interest rates by 25, basi by 25 basis points, as was widely anticipated. Confirming, confirming the notion that it will follow a slower rate hike path than most of the other major central banks. That's maybe why we saw the British pound falling instantly at the time of the release. However, officials said that they are ready to act forcefully if deemed necessary, with market participants lifting their uh, pricing up. They now see interest rates at 3% by year end, expecting at least 50 basis points at each of the September and October meetings. In our view, this explains the pound's strong rebound in the aftermath and the fact that it was found as the second winner in, li in line during the early European morning today. Having said all that, though, we are reluctant to call for a trend reversal in the pound. The bank itself warned that the economy may have contracted in the second quarter and thus more data revealing an ugly picture uh, with regards to the economy could prompt market participants to scale back their hike bets and thereby result in 
another round of selling in the British currency. For now, we will treat yesterday's recovery as a corrective move. Last but not least, we have the Bank of Japan. In contrast to the other major central banks, this one maintained its ultra-loose monetary policy as well as its guidance to keep borrowing costs at present or lower levels. The lower here is important. They stay, will they, they, they stay willing, they remain willing to uh, lower interest rates if needed. An unlikely scenario, but still the guidance uh, is that. In our view, this widens even further the monetary policy divergence between the Bank of Japan and either, uh, uh, excuse me, between the Bank of Japan and other major uh, banks, and leaves the yen vulnerable to further declines. However, although although we we do expect the yen uh, to continue weakening, we will be very careful from now on. What, as the central bank said, it must closely watch the impact of the exchange moves on the economy. So, we cannot rule out some form of intervention in the foreseeable future, which could result a strong uh, negative correction in the yen. So, that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm hosting every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So, goodbye, have a great day, a greater weekend, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next week. JFT, just fair and direct.